Somebody brought me a trailer load of logs this morning to saw for them and look at that log in the middle there. That's black walnut. Now I know that there are lots and lots and lots of videos on YouTube of folks sawing black walnut, but none of them are mine because I have never sawed black walnut before. So here's what the customer wants to have done with this black walnut log. He wants to make a couple of mantel pieces out of this section and we, we decided when he was here to slab up that crotch at the top of it. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to draw on it. I hope that y'all can see this okay, but uh, it's, it's, I think this is the base section where it was cut, so it's kind of jagged here. Here, but we'll try anyway so it's kind of a unique mantle that he wants to make he wants oh, that work shows up pretty good he wants to take it and quarter it so in other words we're going to split it right directly down the middle right here and then we're just going to do this so essentially what we'll have is two flat sides at a 90 degree angle right there. And this right here will be the mantle. And this piece right here would set on the wall or be attached to the wall. And this piece right here would be the top of it, the flat top of it. And then the rest of it would be curved with a live edge on it like that. Now it's gonna be a challenge because he also wants an eight inch square mantle or rectangular mantle out of the rest of it. That's gonna be kind of a challenge because this right here is the is the biggest part of this log and we're looking at only about 16 inches so i'm probably gonna have to call him and uh work out something else because i don't think there's enough log here to get what he wants and my log stretcher is still in the shop so what we're gonna do is get it cut and put it on the mill and probably have to call him and see what else he wants to have done with it because I don't think we're gonna get two eight inch pieces out of a 16 inch log. It looks like you could, right? But you just can't because you gotta cut some off to make, uh, to make a good rectangle log or rectangle mantle. That's okay. Well, thank you, buddy. He also wants these giant pine logs sawed up into some one bys and some two bys. And I don't know if I'll get to that in this video or not, but you're looking at about 22 inches on that end and the other one's about 21. So let's go ahead and get, I guess let's get this log. Actually, let's get this log off first because I think it'll be the easiest one to get off. Right now I'm waiting to get some uh, extra information from the customer and I'm going to take this opportunity to get the mill ready to saw this walnut. The first thing that I want to do is put a brand new blade on the mill. I don't actually have hardwood blades because I mostly just saw pine. These are 10 degree blades that I have. So the least that I can do is put a brand new sharp properly set blade on it to make sure we don't get any wavy cuts through the walnut. No, mommy didn't teach me how to use the sawmill. I taught, I taught myself by watching YouTube videos. I also want to switch the lubricant from diesel fuel to water. Diesel fuel works great with pine to avoid buildup of pitch on the blade, but I don't want to stain this walnut. All right, guys, so I've got some uh, pretty tragic news. I'm glad that I checked with the customer here because I thought that he wanted 42 inch long mantel pieces, but he actually wants one, which will be 74, which brings us to about right here. And the other one is going to be 64, I believe, which actually brings us to right here. 
here. So that means I'm going to have to do my best to whittle the quarter quarter round piece out of that one and the rectangular piece out of this one and that destroys any opportunity that we had of slabbing this crotch and oh my goodness I was so excited about this because there's one crotch here there's one crotch here a much smaller one and that would have been a gorgeous piece of wood and I hate that it's got to be that way but it does because there's just not enough log there to get everything that he wants so this is the way it's got to be so let's go ahead and get it cut up Again, what I want to do here is quarter this log. So these marks from earlier give you an idea. I just want a flat side here, a flat side here, and this quarter. So the log is not even. It's kind of flared just a little bit. It's got a, this, this is the bell end, I guess you could say. So what I want to do is I want to make sure my saw blade is running directly parallel to the pith, to the dead heart of this log. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the saw head and level it with the center right here, make a note of where it is on the depth gauge on the sawmill, and then I'm going to take it to the other side and I'm going to put it on that same level on the sawmill head, and then I'm going to raise that end of the log up to match it. So my gauge is telling me just about seven and a half. That's at the same level on the depth gauge and you can see it's actually pretty well even as it is. The only thing left to do at this point is to make this first cut and I don't mind letting you know that I'm pretty nervous about it because uh, I can't make a mistake on this because this is not a replaceable log. Black walnut is pretty scarce in my area and I can't just go like a pine log. If I mess up a pine log, I can go cut down another tree. It's not a big deal, but I just can't go cut down another black walnut tree. So no mistakes allowed on this. I think I've done all that I can do to prepare for it. So let's make the first cut. I don't think that could have gone much better. The mill got hung up right here, but it wasn't a big deal. We went directly through the heart on this, on this side and on this end. So let's see what it looks like. So the log is positioned on the mill to go ahead and quarter this out and I'm not as concerned at this point with getting a dead centered pith or heart or whatever you want to call it here. What I'm kind of concerned about is making sure that this log or this quarter of this log rather is going to be even with the wall once it gets put up. So I really don't want 
a mantle that is stuck up there on the wall and one end of it is going to be five inches and the other end of it's going to be nine inches and you have this weird looking wedge on the wall that's not what i want so i've got it positioned so that uh it's only about a half of an inch of difference between this end and that end so we're not going to have that weird and i may actually i may actually raise this up a little bit more even to eliminate that i just don't want to have a cricket or a wedge looking mantle on the wall so the center is going to be a little off, but that's going to be on the top side, of course. I think my best bet is to try to get this as dead even as I can so that we've got a decent, even mantle for the wall. So I think that actually turned out pretty good. And to give you all an idea of how it's gonna go on the wall, just imagine that the bunks on this sawmill right here is the wall. And that's how it'll go. So this right here will be the top of the mantle. You can put stuff up there. And uh, this will be the wall portion of it. It's not a huge wedge. Uh, it's about seven inches, a little more than seven inches. And I think it's seven inches on the other side as well, roughly seven inches. Not huge, but it's it's a quarter of the log and uh, that's what I could get out of it. So it is what it is. So that turned out great. Um, I did not make any mistakes <laughs> that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, that worked out good. So he wants some one by material out of the rest of this stuff. So let's go ahead and take this half and this other quarter. We'll make one bys out of it and then we'll see if we can get another mantle out of the rest of it. Before we move on to getting those boards out of the rest of this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and anchor seal this end right here just so he doesn't get any check in or anything like that. Those are pretty nice, but they're very small. Let's get the other half of this log on there and make some much wider boards.
with the material that was left over after the uh, mantle came out of that log, he wanted me to get some one by boards and some two by boards out of whatever was left over so we wouldn't let anything go to waste. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave that slab that we were just looking at exactly like it is because he sounded like he was kind of interested in some slabs as well, even though that slab is about two and a half, two and three quarter. It's pretty thick, but I do think he'd be interested in having a slab or two out of this tree. These one bys, I'm going to go ahead and put a straight edge on them and then we're going to get that gnarly log onto the mill and see if we can get a good rectangular mantle piece out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this and then we're going to get to that gnarly log and see if we can get something usable out of it. So here's our really gnarly log that I was so so excited about getting this crotch. Actually it probably would have been kind of a double crotch right here but unfortunately mm. the customer wants something that is going to probably eliminate that being an option entirely. He wants one mantle piece rectangular 8 by 12 by 68 inches long. That last one was about 74 inches long. This one needs to be 68 and 68 <laughs> falls right directly here in the middle of the crotch. So tragically, I don't think there's any saving this crotch wood right here. In fact, I'm probably going to cut it just a little bit long so that there'll be a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of leeway for him to work with. And that's a shame. I don't think we're going to be able to save that crotch. So anyway, let's go ahead and cut this down and uh, see if we can get a rectangle out of it. I think y'all can kind of probably see here, this log is pretty crooked. It's got knots on it where really big limbs were. So my task here is to get a nice rectangle out of this log. So I don't think that's gonna be particularly easy. So what I'm gonna do first is position it so that I can cut the horns off of it. So the log is curved very slightly. So I'm just gonna turn it so that there's a dip down in the middle and the horns are sticking up on both ends if I can. There we go. So we'll try to flatten off this portion of it first and then we'll deal with the rest of it. Most of the larger hydraulic mills have tow boards on them, levelers that you can use to level the log if you need to. Well, this is a manual mill, of course, so I have to resort to one bys or pieces of bark or whatever, really, if I need to level a log. May have been too much. It was too much. Let's take a closer look at this log before we start hacking at it. So, customer wants one mantelpiece eight by 12. So the problem here is there's not enough material here in the first place to get eight by 12. And I talked to him earlier this morning and he understands that. And he told me just to get what I could out of it. So if I wanted to get an eight by 12, I would need a much larger log. This log is 12 in this direction. And it's, I'm going to call it 18 because this little jut right here this thing that juts out i don't even count because it's going to have to be lopped off before i even start sawing so really what i've got here is 18 by what did i say 12 and the biggest issue here is that the middle of this log shrinks down to between 12 and 14 it's crooked on top of that there's just not enough material here to get a straight perfect 8 by 12 rectangle. So I'm going to attempt to get just as much as I possibly can out of it with as little waste as possible. It may take a few cuts, little sliver cuts, but I'm going to save as much as I can and get the biggest rectangle that I can possibly get.
give y'all an idea of exactly how crooked this log is, look over here. Hope y'all can see this. Ow. See how thin this is right here? I mean, just brutally thin. And this in the middle, I mean, you can see how thick that is. And then it thins down again on that other end. It's very, very crooked. There's a square in here somewhere. So at this point, we finally got a square out of that really gnarly log, but you can see it's still got lots and lots of problems. There's a lot of weighing right here. What I need is a nice, clean mantle, a nice, clean rectangle. And we wanted it eight by 12, of course, but what we've got here is nine and a half. Let me find a square spot to measure it. Nine and a half by, by nine and three quarters. So obviously, we're not gonna get eight by 12. So. I'm just gonna whittle it some and get what I can out of it. That's really all I can do. To try to get the best rectangle I can out of this log, I'm gonna kind of use this as a guide, this heartwood right here. It's already in an oval shape. So I just need to cut it down to the best rectangle that I can get, but I think that's the best pattern to follow. That slab that I just threw off is usable. I'll put it on the trailer and he can certainly take that as well. But at this point where it's seven by nine and you still, we've still see that we've still got some issues here. You see, we've got some wane right here, still a lot of sap wood. There's no way I'm gonna be able to get rid of all this sap wood, but I'd really like to get rid of the wane if nothing else. So I'm gonna make a few more cuts. I hate to do it, but there's, um, there's just really nothing else to do. I think it's time to stop messing with this one. So uh, you can kind of tell what I've done here is I've gotten most of the sap wood off of this. There's some there and there's some there. It ended up being about five by nine, which really is still a pretty substantial chunk of wood. It's not, it's a far cry from eight by 12, but it's a pretty substantial chunk of wood, especially for a mantelpiece. And look at that right there. Look at that wavy, that wavy grain right there. That is really pretty stuff. So my thought, if it was my mantle, it's not my mantle, but if it was my mantle, what I would do is I would have this as the front because you've got the most heartwood in there and very little sapwood. In fact, the sapwood kind of kind of accents it, I think. I think it looks pretty cool like that. <laughs> Maybe I'm just trying to hedge a little bit. So I would have that as the front. And I would have this as maybe the top and I would have this as the back because you can see there's a lot of sapwood still left in the back but I'm just not willing to make another cut on this I'm tired of whittling it down a little bit of wane right there as well or bark rather so uh, yeah 
I'm going to be done with it. Five by nine, five and a quarter by nine, something like that, which is still a pretty substantial chunk of wood. And again, he was understanding that I couldn't, you know, I just couldn't get eight by 12 out of it. So got what I could get. Well, guys, that's going to have to do it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. We will try to get to those two giant pine logs on the next video. Those two logs, those, those logs are huge. One of them is like 21. The other one's 22, something like that. Uh, they're really big, but all he wants out of those is some one buys and some two buys, and they're pretty straight, so it's going to be pretty easy milling, I think. But I just texted the guy a picture of this uh, mantelpiece, and he was totally fine with it, so I think it's going to work perfectly fine. Um, I told y'all there was a square log in that crooked thing somewhere we just had to get it out but i appreciate y'all watching and i will see y'all on the next one